Revelation chapter 22, verse number 13, verse 6, the scripture. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. From the Passion Translations, I am the Alpha and the Tau. I'm the, let's say it again. I'm the Alive and the Tau, the first and the last, the beginning and the completion. Much louder, somebody. I am the Alive and the Tau. The first and the last, the beginning and the completion. Just give God a wave of it. A lave tava, a lave tava, Yahweh of Israel, a I live tab. I live tab. The beginning and the ending. I live tab. Somebody sing it with a wave of freedom and celebrate Jesus. I lift up Yahweh of Israel Yahweh of Israel I lift up I lift The beginning and the ending. The beginning and the ending. Sing it again and worship. Hallelujah. I lift up. Yahweh of Israel. Yahweh of Israel. I lift up, I lift up, I lift up, the beginning and the ending, the beginning and the ending, I lift the beginning. And the ending, I live Lift up your voice and give God a wave offering. Thus welcome the presence of the sweet Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Psalm 119. Verses 65 to 72. Last week, Sunday, September the 9th, the ninth day of the ninth month of 2018, the evening, the sundown, we entered a new Hebrew year, 5779. Can somebody just welcome that great year of blessing? 
Oh, if you understand this prophetic symbol, you will jubilate, you will celebrate it. Welcome year 5779. The Hebrew year 5779. With a shout of praise, with a dance, with a clap, with rejoicing. Amen. I bind that spirit of lukewarmness and that which want to muzzle you at the point of miracle and I cast it out now in the name of Jesus. Empowerment to blessing rest upon you in Jesus name. If you know the significance of that Hebrew year, you will be celebrating. In fact, you will call for people to celebrate with you. Can you welcome that Hebrew year 5779 with rejoicing? Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. It's a year full of great significances. And remember, this is the covenant by which the Lord related with Abraham. The Galatians chapter 3 verse 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Someone say, I receive the promise of the spirit. I receive the blessing of God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob upon my life. If you receive it, you will shout it and celebrate it somebody. Wake up, let your mouth be unlocked with a shout of praise. I receive the promise of the spirit and the blessing of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is upon me. I live to manifest the blessing of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. And this is the calendar by which God related with Abraham. And the Lord now put some landmark of release of miracles. No wonder the Jews are prospering. You don't know the secret why that the blessings of Abraham might come upon us. It's, and through Abraham, all the nations shall be blessed. So we want to decree the blessing of this new year to come through unto us. Why are we reading Psalm 119 from verse 65? Listen. The, the, Psalm 119 is divided into symbolic, prophetic, Hebraic alphabets. And the ninth section is what we are reading, which fit into this new year, 5779. So we rise on our feet and proclaim it out loud from verse 65. You ready to read? Say yes. yes. Proclaim it loud. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge. For I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now... Have I kept thy word? Thou art good and dost good. Teach me thy status. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precept with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may lie in thy status. The law of thy mount is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. And the church says, Holy Spirit, stir up the miraculous, glorify Jesus, impact the blessings into our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody says, joyfully be seated and be sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit. We want to consider this hour the prophetic symbols of year 5779. What are we considering, somebody? I want you to pay proper attention. Thank God for the grace and the insight the Lord has given me onto prophetic Hebrew symbols. And this is the way by which the Lord unfolds his mind. This is not just you are prophesying out of your mind. This is what God has ordained you are now unfolding. This is the timetable of God for his creation. Because the secret things belong unto God. And those things that are revealed to us, they belong unto us and our, our, our children. If you want to flow in prosperity, this is the covenant by which God relates with his people. And this Hebrew year is very, very significant. 
5,779. The 5,000 there, if, 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 if the 5,000 there is called Shameshet. And 700 in Hebrew is Shiva Meot. 70 is Shivim. And 9 is Tesha. Shout hallelujah. So numerically, if you want to say 5,779, you say Shameshet Shavmeot Shivem Tesha. Shout hallelujah. However, in Hebrew, each letter possesses a numerical value with symbols. Can you read this out together, everybody? In Hebrew, each letter possesses a numerical value with symbols. So the Hebrew letter comes, Hebrew alphabets, the letters, they come with their symbols, just like we say A, B, C, and D. But in their alev and up to tav, 22 alphabets all together, 22 is a symbol of light, meaning it, the symbol of Hebrew letters is to unfold light onto God's people. And so each one comes with symbol. So if we look at the symbols for this year 5779, somebody paid proper attention. This will open your eyes to move into the realm of the prophetic. Are you ready for this? The Hebrew, the fifth letter of Hebrew is He. And remember, Hebrew letters possesses numerical values with symbols. And this is how A is. 5779. A, what does it look like? Like a window. Shout hallelujah. We're going to talk about the significance of that soon. How about seven? Seven is Zion. And it's a symbol of a sword. And it's also a symbol of a scepter of a king. Somebody say a scepter of a king. So come on, say it louder. Somebody. And with a scepter, it, it indicates rulership authority by which you can decree once you hold the scepter and make a decree it becomes irrevocable so you can see as you have hey zain zain tet tet is the other the nine the hebrew letter for nine is tet and we meaning a container a basket a vessel doesn't this look like a, a pregnant woman? Can you look at that? A pregnant woman. It's a symbol of a womb. And you see a crown watching over the pregnancy. Hmm. Lord, help us here. And that is the, this is the main symbol for this year. Tet. A, a womb with a crown. A container to gather the blessing. That's why I'm so extremely excited about year 5779 that is just started seven days ago. I'm extremely excited because the mind of God for his people is very clear in this prophetic year. Shout hallelujah. Let's pick each of these symbols and unfold the mind of God for his people. This is a prophetic release for God's people to prosper. As this word is coming, life is coming unto somebody here right now. You are entering into God's agenda for your life, and that cancels every evil agenda for your life. Oh, Lord, help us. You are stepping into the, what God has destined from before the foundation of the world, and that unfolds greater blessings that you can ever imagine in your life. If I were you, I would be excited and I would celebrate it. Somebody say, I welcome this Hebrew year 5779 into my life i welcome the blessings of hebrew year 5779 into my life i step into the prophetic miracles of year 5779 i manifest the blessing of hebrew year 5779 every blessing that god has destined for this year 5779 i possess it to the fullest in jesus name and the church says a resounding threefold amen Tell, some, tell somebody be, better be awakened in your spirit. Let's take each of these one after the other. The first one, A. 
This is a symbol of a window. Somebody say window. And by window, it's an ind a prophetic indication is there is an opening in the wall. Somebody say, there is an opening in my wall. Take, for instance, the way it is, the wall all around us. If somebody is standing just behind this wall, will you see him or her? If there is anything there, would you see? But suddenly, if we create a window, you will see beyond the wall. This is the Hebrew year to see beyond the wall. Meaning, nothing can cage me, nothing can hold me bound. My destiny cannot be imprisoned. Any projection to imprison your life is a lie of the devil. If I were you, I will celebrate that with great rejoicing. Declare that, say, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, and as his spirit lives, my destiny cannot be caged, my life cannot be imprisoned. My life cannot be caged. My life cannot be imprisoned. I break loose. I break free from every hold of imprisonment. In Jesus' name, lift up your two hands and give thanks. Say, Jehovah, the Holy One of Israel, thank you for creating windows to see beyond my walls. Thank you for creating windows for me to see beyond my walls. I'm seeing beyond the walls. Hallelujah. I'm seeing beyond the walls. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church says, see beyond the wall. Many a times we go through some situations in life and we feel this is the end. You don't see anything else happening. You just feel I'm, it's done, I'm over. And that's why people give up on everything. When you look around and say, see, see, I'm not seeing anything. Why? Because if the enemy wants to waste a life, they create a wall around that person. And when anywhere you see, you don't see any hope of any improvement because all you could see is war. There are blessings behind the war. I command every wall surrounding your life to cage you, to collapse right now. Collapse, 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 war, collapse. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and decrease every, every wall, every wall to cage my lie. In the name of Jesus, collapse. Blood of Jesus, collapse this wall. Break this wall asunder. Amen. If you understand that, your spirit man will awake. Listen, if ordinary man could command a wall to break, no longer than that he broke. The wall of this cold wall in, in that time between East Germany and West Germany. Ronald Reagan went there to address it. And he called for the uh, prime minister, I said, break down this wall. And he came back to America. From the release of that word, things began to steer. No longer than that, the wall collapsed. Why? He used his presidential authority to speak to the wall. He did not go physically to break it down. He just spoke. As a president of the United States of America, break down this wall. He departed and the action began. No longer the wall collapsed. How much more? You, a royal priesthood, a kingly priest, a peculiar person that you can command innumerable company of angels to your attention. That when you, whatever you speak, it will be established. When you make a decree, it will be honored both in heaven and on earth and all the realm of creation we watch it to fulfillment you can speak against anything that want to cage your life i see cages being broken asunder right now i don't see i don't i don't know what you are going through that you feel it is over you can, it, nothing good can happen i command any war caging your life the covenants are destroyed the spell cancel the causes taken away I command the walls to collapse now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and decree any wall. Listen, I don't know how dangerous, how thick, how gigantic the wall may be. I see the walls collapsing. If you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, without doubting in your heart, it shall be done. So command the wall, any wall assigned to cage my life. Let God arise, shatter, scatter them asunder. In the name of Jesus, somebody better scatter and shatter the wall. Any wall 
assigned to cage my life the blood of Jesus rebuke and condemn in the name of Jesus Holy Ghost will shatter this wall cast this wall asunder I command the wall to break I command the wall be shattered in the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus blast this wall against this garden asunder in the name of Jesus amen and the church says listen I'm so excited this Hebrew year 5779 we just entered has deep prophetic symbols the first symbol is five which is a window of with a symbol of a window meaning the Lord is creating windows in your world somebody shout yes it also indicates windows in the roof someone say window in the roof because by their tradition, they make windows not only by the world to enter, but there's also the window by the roof. Meaning somebody is arising beyond your limitations. If I take something now and I throw it up, what will happen is the roof will bounce it back, say, enough. You can't go beyond this. What are the heights you have been believing God to attain? And each time you make attempt as though you are progressing, something bounces you back. Say, you don't belong to a higher class of blessing. Somebody say, not my portion anymore. <laughs> Therefore, in this Hebrew year 5779, what is the Spirit of the Lord saying unto the people? It is time to arise above your limitations. Whatever that has limited your bloodline cannot limit you. Whatever that has caged your bloodline cannot limit you. I see somebody arising beyond every limitation. Somebody say, thank you, resurrected Jesus, for creating windows in my roof. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I arise. May your spirit man indeed arise. I arise above every limitation. I prevail and I arise above every limitation. Prevail, arise, prevail, arise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I prevail. I David Kamalafe. I prevail and I arise above every limitation. Lift up your voice and double that aggression. This is no joke. Wake up in your spirit. I prevail and arise above every limitations in the name of Jesus. Hey, somebody's arising. Somebody is prevailing. Hey, Karaski Daba. The strength to arise is upon you. The grace to arise is upon you. Arise, prevail over every limitations. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody shout, Amen, threefold. Amen. Amen. So, the symbol for this Hebrew year is a window. Somebody say, A window. What would window do? Window admits light. Somebody say, It permits light. It admits light. It makes the rays of light to flow. Meaning, the, the Lord will begin to give you illumination. Amen. Darkness will not prevail over you. Amen. Has it not been written, the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Has it not been written, the darkness is past and the true light now shines. Say, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, and as his spirit lives, darkness shall not prevail over me. Oh. If I were you, this is my moment. As the Lord God of Israel liveth, and as his spirit lives, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, darkness shall not prevail over me. Iniquity shall not prevail over me. Affliction shall not prevail over me. In Jesus' name, darkness shall not prevail over this gathering. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is the year that the light of God will illuminate you. This is the year that things that are hidden in darkness will disappear. Um, it excites me because when the light begins to come through the window, things that are lost or hidden can easily be discovered. And this is the year of great recovery. Somebody say great recovery. I prophesy to you by the unction of the Holy Spirit, every good thing you have lost, I decree great recovery, great restoration, great recovery. Great restoration and restoration and impartation of every good thing you have lost. Lift up those two and say in the name of Jesus. 
I take back and I manifest. I take back and I manifest. Every good thing that I've lost, I take you back. I manifest it. I take you back. I manifest it. Hey, Yakatege Legaro Sebia. Every good thing that I have lost in the name of Jesus, I take you back. I manifest you. I take you back. I take you back. I take you back. And I manifest the blessing in the name of Jesus. The blessing, the honor, the glory, good things that I've lost by divine decree in the name of Jesus. I take you back. I take you back. I, man I manifest the blessing. I manifest the glory in Jesus' mighty name we pray. So I command light be upon you. Light be upon your home. Light be upon all that pertains to you. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and say, Light be louder. Much louder, somebody. And the church says, When you talk about window, window permits passage of ear and sound. Somebody say, Passage of ear and sound. Oh, meaning the offensive odor. How do you characterize demons? They come with their offensive odor. That's why the Bible calls demons foul spirits. So the foul spirit cannot cage you anymore. The fresh air of the Holy Spirit will blow them away. This is that year. No demon shall have control over your home. No demon shall have control over your children. No demon shall have control over your health. No demon shall have control over your walk with God. No demon shall have a hold over, your, over all that pertains to you. In the name of Jesus. Why? That God has provided a window for the fresh air of the Holy Spirit. To blow away every foul spirit. Holy Spirit, help us. I command the release of the wind of the Holy Spirit. To blow over this garden. And blast asunder every foul spirit. The Lord rebuke you. Every foul spirit. The blood of Jesus condemn you. I decree the wind of the Holy Spirit. Blast asunder and blow away every foul spirit. The wind of the Holy Spirit. Blast asunder. Blow away heavy foul spirit, the wind, the wind, the wind of the Holy Spirit. We begin to give a wave offering unto the Lord. By the release of that wave offering, there is a release of the wind of the law. By the wave offering unto the law, there is a release of the wind of the law. And lift up your voice and decree. Say, oh wind of the Holy Spirit. Say, oh wind of the Holy Spirit. Blast asunder, blow away every foul spirit assigned against my life. Listen, this is no joke. Listen, many a times when you walk into a place, regardless of the perfume, the cologne, or anything you spread on your body, you feel people will smell and say, hmm, this smells good. People smell demons. And immediately they avoid you. I could feel demons. I could feel release of affliction. And they don't want to associate with you. No wonder the Bible calls it foul spirit. The spirit, the spirit man of people picks up something in you and they repel you. And you wonder, I'm good. You come with a good work. You want to show them how good, how great you are. The more you show them, the more they reject you. Someone said, the Lord rebuke it. Where are your rewards? Rewards due to you being denied. Why? Because there is, they could smell the foul spirit. Can you give God a wave offering? And with the release of that wave offering, I command the release of the wind of the Holy Spirit. With the release of the wave offering, I command the release of the wind of the Holy Spirit. Give God a wave offering and let there be release of the wind of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let the wind of the Holy Spirit blast asunder every foul spirit. Let the wind of the Holy Spirit blast asunder every foul spirit. Lift up your voice and decree. Say, oh wind of the Holy Spirit. If I were you, I would double that aggression. Oh wind of the Holy Spirit, blast asunder every foul spirit assigned against my life. Oh wind of the Holy Spirit, blast asunder Every foul spirit, blast asunder. Every foul spirit assigned against my life. 
in the name of Jesus. Hey, somebody release the wind. Jakata gade kararararandabash kraska da la 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 ya 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 Oh, wind of the Holy Spirit, blast asunder, remove, take away every foul spirit assigned against my life. Foul spirit assigned against this garden. Foul spirit assigned against your home. Let the wind of the Holy Spirit blast them asunder. Blast them asunder. In the name of Jesus, somebody release the wind of the Holy Spirit. Masheke de gelege radagala bagaria. Hey, grass kadagali gali gali galia. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. What says the scripture? Let's deal. Shall we deal a little bit with that wind of the Holy Spirit? Are you ready? What says the scripture in Psalm 135? And verse 7, look up and read. It says, He causes the vapor to ascend from the ends of the heart. He maketh lightness for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries. I command the wind from the treasuries of the law to bring divine blessings upon you. The Bible says, He bringeth the wind out of his treasury. Meaning, if God stuck some blessings, and he wants the blessings to locate you. The moment the Lord assigned the blessing to you, the wind will blow out of his treasure. That blessing will just be lifted up and it's locating somebody. Who is that blessing locating here? Therefore, lift up your voice and stretch out your hand to receive the blessing. Say, the wind from the, from the divine treasuries, the wind from the divine treasuries, Bring forth my blessings now. The wind from divine treasures bring forth my glory, bring forth my honor, bring forth my blessing. Call it for, call it for, call it for, call it for, call it for. Hey, Radagadagadegedia, get the grass kada, shadage, skadage, meske de geligaria. Hey. The wind from divine treasuries, by divine command, bring forth my glory, bring forth my blessing, bring forth every blessing due to me. I call forth for the wind of divine treasury to bring forth my blessings, to bring forth my glory. In Jesus' name, stretch out your right hand. Mm. I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. There are release of special angels that excel in strength in this gathering. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I call the they are command that the north wind awake, O north wind. Stir up yourself, O south wind. Arise, O east wind. Spring forth, O west wind. And blast asunder every limitation, every delay, every affliction, the foul spirit assigned against anyone present here. In the name of Jesus, I command, O north wind, awake. Oh, north wind, awake. Oh, you south wind, south wind, stir up thyself. Oh, east wind, arise. Let the west wind spring forth and blast asunder every affliction assigned to anyone here. Let the wind of the Lord blast them away. Foul spirit, let the wind of the Lord blast them away. In the name of Jesus. Wind of the Lord, awake, arise, tie up thyself and blast through this garden. Push affliction away. In the name of Jesus. And the church says, hold your two hands as though you are holding something. Say, angels of the living God. Shout out louder. The angels holding the four winds. Meaning the north wind. South, east, and west winds. Angels holding the four winds of the earth. Release the wind. Mm. Angels holding the four winds. The north wind, the south wind, the east wind, the south wind. Angels holding the four winds of the earth. Release now. The wind of fire and fight for me. Release now the wind of fire and fight for me. 
In the name of Jesus, let the angels hold in the four wings. Amen. If you understand that, you will give it all. What you are declaring is, anywhere there is air, the wind blows, victory is certain for me. Uh -huh. there, in, deep in the water, air is there. Under the ground, air is present. <laughs> in the height, air is present. You better decree. Angels, yes. holding the four wings of the heart, release the wind of fire and fight for me right now. Let the wind of fire be released to fight for me. Angels that hold the four wings of the heart, angels that hold the four wings of the heart, release that wind of fire and fight for me right now. Release the wind of fire, release the wind of fire. Release the wind of fire and fight for me. Somebody lift up your voice and double that aggression. Hey, let the wind of fire be released to fight for me now. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, so window admits light and permits the flow of air and sound. Somebody say flow of air and sound. What says the scripture in Psalm 47 verse 5? The Bible says, God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. This is the year that somebody will hear the sound of victory. Amen. What says the scripture in Psalm 89 verse number 15? The Bible says, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O oh Lord, in the light of thy countenance. This is that year that somebody needs to design the sound of victory. You may be confronted with a lot of situations and challenges, but it is the best way forward is to design the sound of victory in the midst of chaos, the sound of rejoicing in the midst of confusion. The Bible says, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. When you are confronted with situation, it looks so chaotic. It sounds so bad. But when you look at it with the eye of the Lord, you could design joy, blessing, victory in the midst. I command the blessing to design the sound of joy. In the name of Jesus, as they not been written, God is gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of trumpet. It shall come to pass that in this year 5779, you will hear the sound of victory. Yeah. Tell somebody, sound of victory is in my life. Look at somebody and say, sound of rejoicing is in my home. Tell somebody, sound of healing is in my life. Tell somebody, sound of deliverance is in my house. Tell somebody, sound of rejoicing is in this place. Tell another person, sound of glory is in my life. Say, in the name of Jesus, in this Hebrew year 5779, I manifest the sound of joy, sound of victory, sound of healing, sound of deliverance, sound of victory. Can somebody give a shout, a sound of praise? Give that sound of joy. Give that sound of victory. Hey, kaye ye li ba ba ba. baba. Let there be sound of rejoicing in the house. Let there be sound of revival. 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 Sound of healing. Sound of victory. Hey, ba 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 there is sound of victory. There is sound of revival. There is sound of healing. There is sound of victory. There is sound of deliverance. There is sound of adoration. Let there be sound of rejoicing. Somebody give a shout of praise.
Let the sound of rejoicing fill this And the church says, year 5779. I'm so excited with this, this Hebrew year we just entered. What's the significance of the next number seven? Seven, remember that Hebrew letters processes in numerical values with symbols. It's called Zion. Somebody say Zion. It's a sim- How does it look like? It's a symbol of a sword. It's a symbol of a sword. I remember the seven appears twice. Five, seven, seven. So God is equipping you in a double fold. <laughs> Somebody who attempted to attack you the last time, if they try it again, they are mistaken. Why? Because the, you are not the same person that attacked the last time. Because you are doubly equipped. Can you imagine somebody carrying a fierce two-edged sword in both hands? You'll be careful to move closer. Meaning anywhere you come from, boom. Tell somebody, I'm doubly divinely equipped for miracles. Shout it louder, somebody. Say, I'm mightily, divinely equipped for miracles. What says the scripture? That out of his mouth went a... That's Revelation chapter 1 verse 16. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 16, it says, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. A sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. Talking about the Lord Jesus. Lift up your right hand and say, resurrected Jesus. By the sword of your mouth slain. You better hit that word slain really hard. Resurrected Jesus. By the sword of your mouth Slain. The strong men and the strong women are signed against my law. Slain them, slain them, slain them. By the sword of your mouth, slain them. Resurrect Jesus. By the sword of your mouth, slain the strong men and the strong women are signed against my law. Slain them, slain them, slain them, slain them in the name of Jesus. And the church says, Lift up those hands. By the sword of the mouth of our resurrected Jesus. Whatever evil, whatever iniquity, whatever affliction, whatever tragedy projected against your life, the sword of the mouth of resurrected Jesus. Slain them, cut them off. Slain them, cut them off. Slain them, cut them off. Cut them off. Cut them off. Cut off the strong men. Cut off their strong gold. Cut off their altars. Cut out them. Cut down their groups. Cut down their agents. Cut down their weapons. Cut them down. Cut them down. Hey! 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 Slain, 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 slain. By the sword of your mouth, resurrected Jesus, slain every evil attached to this place, slain them off in the name of Jesus. And the church says, you can see Zion is also a symbol of a scepter. Somebody say scepter. Zion is also a symbol of a scepter. And when you talk of a scepter, the scepter is a sign of authority, the staff of authority. Somebody say staff of authority. So you can see 577, Zion, Zion, the scepter of the Lord is being released upon God's people. Somebody say the scepter of a king. A dear royal priest in this house. A dear kingly priest in this house. What is the Spirit of God saying in this Hebrew year 5779? That it is time for God's people to begin to operate as kings and queens. Hallelujah. This is the time you should come to the consciousness of who you are 
and manifest your true divine identity. Your true identity is not somebody who is broken down, afflicted, mourning, and sorrowful. Some say that's not my identity. Your identity is not somebody who is defeated and going through losses. Somebody say that's not my identity. Your identity is, some, is not somebody. Your identity is not somebody who is hopeless and who has no hope of a better tomorrow. Somebody say that's not my identity. The hour has come for God's people to manifest their true divine identity. Anywhere you are, wherever you find yourself, you are carrying the scepter of the Lord. Someone say the scepter of the Lord. Those who understand things about kingdom, they know the king or the queen will carry a scepter. Once there is a scepter, there is a release of authority. And whatever the king or the queen says becomes a decree and is irrevocable. Remember the case of Queen Esther. She was not permitted to enter into the palace without the king calling her. But she said, if I perish, I perish. And the moment she entered, forbidding the law of the land, and the king and the people were saying, it is time for her to be killed because she has broken the law of the land. Suddenly the king held the scepter. That even if there is a law to kill her with, by entering without permission, by my scepter, I reverse the law. It could be an ancient law that have been ruling in the land. I reverse the law. I don't know what kind of law that is ruling in your own bloodline, that is hindering and forbidding people from stepping into greatness, from arising gloriously by the scepter of the law, by the scepter of the Lord God of hosts, that law is abolished, that law is cancelled in the name of Jesus. How great it is. Most kings will carry just one scepter. But you can imagine 5779 carrying two scepters. No wonder I, those of us who traveled with us to Israel, if you have, when you are privileged to be invited to Masada at the graduation of the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force. When they are swearing, when they are doing the graduation ceremony of the, those who went to the military school, what do they do? They carry the rifle on the left hand side and they carry the Torah, the Bible on the right hand. And they will lift both before in the up eye and they swear by the rifle and by the Bible to defend their nation with their life. Meaning, we will fight physically. And with this Bible, if it's a spiritual tool, we are ready. So both hands, lifting up the rifle and lifting up the Torah. See, we will fight both in the natural and the spiritual. Meaning, any battle coming against this nation, we will defend it with the rifle, we will defend it with the word of God. Meaning the enemy has no way of escape. This is the year the Lord is giving somebody a double scepter. Amen. If with one scepter, the king can decree and it shall be established, how much more with a double scepter? Meaning there will be accelerated manifestations of decree. The decree you release will be hastened to manifestation. Somebody better get excited. That's why I'm excited with this in Hebrew here. Lift up your two hands. Say, I possess the divine scepter. I am divinely equipped for miracle. The scepter of a king is in my right hand and is in my left hand. By the scepter of the king, I decree blessing into my life. You better lift up your voice and decree. Remember, whatever you decree, it shall be established unto you. By the scepter of the king in my left hand, by the scepter of the king in my right hand, I decree blessing into my life. I decree healing into my life. I decree deliverance into my life. I decree favor into my life. In the name of Jesus, you better stretch forth that hand as though you are holding somebody, as though you are holding something. Lift up those hands and begin to make the decree into your hand. Into, make a decree. Say, by the scepter of the king in my left hand, by the scepter of the king in my right hand, I decree blessings into my life. I decree favor into my life. In the name of Jesus, somebody lift up your voice and make that decree. By the scepter of the king in my left hand, by the scepter of the king on my right hand, 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree blessings upon this garden. I decree healing upon this garden. I decree life upon this garden. I decree deliverance upon this garden. I decree joy upon this garden. I decree favor upon this garden. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. There is a double decree taking place. Hey, Raska de Gelegelengraske. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church says, let's decode it further. Year 5779. How about the nine? The nine is called tet. Somebody say tet. It's a symbol of container. A vessel, a basket. And look at it closely. Doesn't it look like a pregnant woman? Yes. Women in the house shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And more so with a crown. Can you see a pregnant woman and there is a crown watching over the woman and the pregnancy? <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So traditional symbol, traditionally it symbolizes a womb where offsprings are conceived and developed. Offsprings conceived and developed. And you know what gets me excited more? This Hebrew year 5779, the sundown of last Sunday, the ninth month, of the ninth day, the ninth day of the ninth month of year 2018 came year 5779. You, normally, the gestation period of human would be 40 weeks. Women, am I saying right? That is, from nine months, the baby begins to steer. Say, I'm ready. By any means, I'm coming forth. Amen? Amen. So, if Normally, gestation period will be about nine months. And this Hebrew year came in the ninth day of the ninth month of 2018. How many nights you have in 18? Two. And this is the 18th year of a new millennium. Oh, Lord, help us. It's never coincidental. There is something the Spirit of God is stirring up. And the church must be awakened to it. On the ninth day of the ninth month of this 18th millennium of, 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 of the 18th year of a new millennium, in 18 you have two nines. And it's that where comes year 5779. So you can see combination of ninth day, nine month, 18th year of the millennium, double nine. And there comes... Five, seven, seven, nine. How many nines there? Five. Five is a symbol of grace. Somebody is receiving the grace to conceive and develop blessing. Oh Lord. Tell somebody you have received grace to conceive and develop blessings. And you know the kind of the womb I hear is that there was a crown watching over it. In the past, when you conceive good ideas, something will come and abort it. In the past, when they put something in you that you ought to grow and bring to maturity, something will come and kill it. In the past, when something good is given to you, it doesn't last. But this year, the Lord is giving you a womb to receive, to conceive, to develop, and he put a, a watch. Say, let me see what will kill this one. Oh, Lord, help us. Let me see what will kill or abort this one. That get, makes me extremely excited. You have entered into a year where the eyes of the Lord will watch over every good thing he has put in your life. You have entered into a season where the eyes of the Lord will watch over every good thing he has put in your life. You receive that shout, hallelujah. You know what made me excited about the, this, the ninth 
there, coming in the ninth month of the ninth day and in the, the, the a double, a double nines of the millennium of 5779, the Bible says, from the sixth hour unto the ninth hour, the, the darkness cover all the land until the ninth hour where Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And by that cry, the veil rent, the head quake, the rocks rent, the graves open, the dead began to come alive. This is the year. They said there was darkness until the ninth hour. Somebody say that with me. There was darkness. Shouted louder, there was darkness until the night hour. And at the night hour, he cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Many who feel forsaken, abandoned, ignored, rejected, as though it is over, nothing good can happen. The Lord is releasing his goodness, his blessing upon your life. And you are wondering, would this blessing be like others? That when good things come, it doesn't last. When blessings come, something will kill it. He now assigned a watch. Somebody say a watch. Over the, the blessing he has put in you. Saying, let me see what we about this one. This is the year that good things will not be aborted in your life. Blessings will not be aborted in your life. Oh, I speak by the spirit of prophecy into somebody's life. Every good thing the Lord has destined for you, all your giftings shall begin to bring forth rewards. Someone say rewards. Shout it louder. Much louder. There was darkness until the night hour. And when the night hour rolled in, Jesus said, enough. Of this darkness. Enough of the rain and the rage of darkness in your life. Somebody say enough. enough. If I were you, I would sound it louder. Enough. enough of the spirit of miscarriage in your life. Enough of the spirit of abortion in your life. Enough of what aborts blessings in your life. Enough of tragedy in your life. Enough of shame in your life. Enough of reproach in your life. Or the darkness rule until the night hour. And this is that year that just rolled in. The reign of darkness is terminated in your life. The reign of affliction is abolished in your life. They are rooted out and cast out to desolations. In the name of Jesus. And the church says... And when Jesus cried out, the veil of the temple rent from top to the bottom. Every veil that been forbidding your glorious advancement, let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to rend them, tear them apart. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says the rocks rent. Every adding situation, I command them to melt because the Lord our God is a consuming fire. As wax met before the fire. Every adding situation in your life. Holy Ghost will melt, 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 melt. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says the veils open. Rocks rent. There was an earthquake. I command every evil program into your roots, into your foundation. Holy Ghost earthquake, shatter them asunder. Holy Ghost earthquake, shatter the foundation of affliction. Lift up your voice and decree. This is not just say, Holy Ghost earthquake. Say sharp, louder, double the aggression. I can hear you better. Somebody shout, Holy Ghost earthquake. Strike down every evil foundation attacking my life. Holy Ghost earthquake. Holy Ghost earthquake. Strike down every evil foundation attacking my life. Strike them down, strike them down, strike them down. Ah, if I were you, this is my moment. Holy Ghost earthquake, 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 strike down every evil foundation afflicting my life in the name of Jesus. Strike them down, strike them down, strike them down, strike them down right now in the name of Jesus.
Lord Jesus, I see victory in the house. Mashaka da gagash, gagagarana gagagosh, megagagagagagosh. Hey, Holy Ghost earthquake, Holy Ghost earthquake, strike down this evil foundation in this garden and bring them to nothing. In the name of Jesus, he said, The rock rent. I command every adding situation in your life to cut asunder. Earthquake of the Lord upon every adding situation to overthrow them to desolations. In Jesus' name, the Bible said, The, the graves open. I command every good thing in you dead, come alive, yeah. resurrect. In the name of Jesus, because the spirit of him that raised up Jesus Christ from death dwells in you. And he that raised up Jesus Christ from death has quickened your mortal body by his Holy Spirit. Every good thing dead in you, come alive, come alive, come alive. In the name of Jesus, say every good thing dead in my life. Lay your right hand on your belly and proclaim it really well. Your right hand on your belly and come on. Every good thing dead in my life. In the name of Jesus, resurrect, 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 come alive, resurrect, resurrect, come alive. Now, you better call it forth. Lift up your voice and double the aggression. Mashaka da gadla bodege lafi. Every good thing dead in my life by divine command in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come alive, resurrect, come alive, resurrect, 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 resurrect now. In Jesus mighty name we pray and the church says can i go a little further if you consider chronologically the order of birth of the tribes of israel the ninth tribe was issachar and issachar means reward meaning there is a reward coming for somebody this year and this reward is coming with a crown you receive that, say yes. And when you talk about crown, you talk about rulership, you talk about release of reward. Somebody is manifesting glorious reward. Say, every day of my life. Say, henceforth by divine command. Henceforth by divine command. Every day of my life, I manifest glorious rewards. Glorious rewards. Lift up your voice and command that. Henceforth by divine command. Every day of my life, I manifest glorious rewards in Jesus name and the church says the good things that God has put in you is watching over and it's coming to pass can we dig a little further about death this symbol if you take the Hebrew Bible the Torah reading from Genesis chapter 1 and you want to consider when was the first time this symbol appears in the Bible? The first time that symbol appeared is in Genesis chapter 1 verse 4. And in Genesis chapter 1 verse 4 it says, And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So the word that shows up in the word good in the word good the good in the in the hebrew bible represented by tet that was the first time the word tet appears good somebody say good 